Welcome to our Sunday worship. Today is the third Sunday in Lent, a time when we place the crown of thorns on the cross as a reminder of the suffering of Jesus Christ for our sake. It is also a reminder of the loneliness and the injustice of the world. Thank you. Almighty God, you say that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and heart the soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims its handiwork. One day pours out, out its song to another. And one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language. And their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, and comes forth for the bridegroom out of this chamber, and he goes this as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again. And there is nothing hidden from its seat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statues of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold much more than fine gold. Sweeter also than honey dripping from a honeycomb. By them also is a servant taught, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from perpetuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So far be unfilled and innocent of my great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer.
loving God, open our eyes to see the beauty of your holiness. Open our ears to the message of your word. Open our minds to the challenge of your truth. Open our hearts to the power of your love. Open our lives to the coming of your spirit, that we may truly worship you now and forever. Gracious God, we are glad that you offer times to stop and think. In this Lenten season, we pause in our journey and that and thank you for your costly commitment to us in Jesus Christ. For times of personal prayer and reflection. As the birds uncurl and flowers open their faces to the sun. Turn us to the light and warmth of your presence. That in confidence we may confess our sin. God of justice, peace, and love, we knock at your gate with prayers. We confess that our lives and the life of the world are broken apart by our wrongdoings. As we open the door of justice, we ask to be forgiven. As we open the door to peace, we ask to be renewed. As we open the door to love, we ask to be made whole. Gracious God, we thank you because through Jesus Christ all our sins are forgiven. Amen. When it was time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at a table exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins the money changers had turned and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken us 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. May my words and thoughts be acceptable to you. O Lord, my refuge and my redeemer. Words from Psalms 19, verse 14. The Passover festival took place yearly at the temple in Jerusalem. Every Jewish adult was expected to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem during this time, or at least once in their lifetime. 
Jerusalem was both the religious and political seat of Palestine, and the place where the Messiah was expected to arrive. Many Jewish families from all over the world would travel to Jerusalem for the festival. The temple was always crowded with thousands of out-of-town visitors. The religious leaders crowded it further by allowing money changers and merchants to set up booths in the court of Gentiles, the only place where they were allowed in the temple. Worship was made difficult if not impossible. The religious leaders did not care how the Gentiles, or basically the foreigners, would gather for worship. The temple tax had to be paid in local currency, and therefore the money changers often charge exorbitant rates. The people were expected to offer an animal for their sin offering, but the merchant at the, at the temple rejected the animals brought from anywhere else, claiming they were not clean, so that they could sell what they had at a very high price. A few months ago, before the lockdown, I had a visit to the Leeds market. It was on a Friday evening, and some traders were trying to make their last sales by shouting, Roll up! Roll up for the bargain! The market was crowded and noisy. Thankfully, there were no merchants selling animals. But I wonder how it could have been if there were any. Just figure out the scene. Animals droppings all over. Can you imagine how filthy it can be if that was a place of worship? Stepping on a cow path is not a good experience, and especially before devotion. It can be filthy and disgusting. Cows mooing, sheep bleating, doves singing, total chaos. I grew up looking after animals, and I can guarantee you that stepping on a wet cow pad is not a good experience. A horrible smell and disgusting. Can you imagine the savior of the world? hopping around the market, trying to avoid the animal droppings. No wonder he was angry. Jesus was angry with, with the misuse of the temple. Some would say that was a righteous indignation because of the zeal he had for his father's house, a place of worship. He drove out animals and overturned the money changer stables. Thankfully, he didn't hurt anyone physically. It was a controlled rage. The gospel passage is encouraging us to reflect on the use of the church and our lives. How well do we make use of our places of worship? Are they there to help us worship? Or do our activities disrupt worship for others? Are the activities within our church buildings sometimes also undermine mission if perceived as unwelcoming? Jesus spoke about the destruction of the temple and building it in three days. In this case, he was referring to his death and resurrection. 
1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. God himself lives in us through the Holy Spirit. We are the house of the Lord. And because that is what we are, how well have we kept the living place of God? What have we given up? And what have we taken in during this time of Lent to listen to God what he has to tell us? Is there any mess in us that needs cleaning? That's self-soul-searching. You might be aware that I started the discernment process of my call in presbyteral ministry from last year. Johnny has challenged me to allow God to clean up the mess in my life. There are things I have given up and taken in others to allow God to speak to me, to transform me in this journey of faith. I am not suggesting that it's all that easy, but Jesus promised to be with us until the end of times. Lent and season gives us an opportunity to reflect on those poignant questions and live a life that is worthy of our calling. Maybe it's a season for all of us to let Jesus do the house cleaning in our lives. May God help us in this process of cleaning, cleaning our own lives, cleaning the life of the church, as we continue to design his call during this Lenten season. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Ooh.
serve and teach and live the word they know. Here the outcast and the stranger bears the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and Let us pray. We pray for those who cannot walk the Lenten road. How can they fast to show display of faith when fasting is their daily life? Starvation ever close, and thirst is barely quenched. The well is dry. How can they make a busy jail clear to offer time for service, prayer, and thought when every desert day is tedium long, stretched out by the un unemployment and the loss of work, loss of business, departed loved ones? And one day stands as did the last, and will the next. Lord, whilst we thank you for the luxury of land and every call to discipline it brings, we pray for those who know its call too well and live it every day. And now let us join together in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
loving God. Help us to remember that we are your temple and that your spirit lives in us. Help us to keep our lives clean and useful for your service. Amen.